Today's topic is hospitals in China versus hospitals in the West. So, Simo, where are we going today? Well, I just had a baby, my first kid, and uh, my wife is in the hospital with it right now, so I figured we'd go introduce the uh, Churchill family to the new, my new uh, arrival, and also film a little bit about hospitals in China. Okay, good. It's a very good topic, so let's talk about hospitals in China versus the West. And okay. actually, I'm a pretty good person to talk about this topic because that's my profession here in China is training doctors. Right. So I suppose let's start talking about the difference between public and private hospitals here. You go first. A lot of people think because it's like a socialist communist country they would only have kind of like a free healthcare public hospital situation, but that's not the case. Actually, private hospitals account for a massive uh, proportion of them here in China. Uh, they tend to be on the upper end or even lower end in quality, and the standard is usually the public hospital. But um, the yeah, there, I'd say there's just as many private hospitals as there are public hospitals. Yeah, and uh, another thing you have to realize is that every community has its own little clinic. Yeah. So basically what happens is, for instance, near near my house, actually my, my fiancé works for the Second People's Hospital of Futian, which is a massive big hospital, and they've got a whole bunch of clinics, and she works at one of the clinics in a specific area as a GP there. So people will go to the local clinic to basically do their vaccinations, get their health checks done, any, any kind of small things, um, and they can buy medicine and get treated for colds and things and if it's serious then they go to the big hospital gotcha yeah um, actually you know we could waffle on about the the differences between public and private hospitals for a long time but there's actually no need because I have made actually just last week I made a video about private health care in China oh, cool so I'm just gonna link it here so people can go and take a look they can see what it looks like inside a private clinic okay and if you want to check out the actual uh, process of giving birth and all that kind of stuff that I went through, um, check out my link here for what's up with uh, having a baby in China. Cool, yeah, so now we got that out of the way, let's continue actually talking about hospitals here. Okay, now let's talk about the professionalism, the level of skill and professionalism of the doctors here in China, because I guess that's something a lot of people want to know. So I'll go first because I actually train doctors and I have to say that I'm actually fairly disappointed with the level of uh, how could I say knowledge and skill that most of the doctors I come across have here in China and that's simply because I'm not a doctor I, I do train them in some very like I said uh, hospital rules and etiquette uh, basic medical uh, terminology etc but I'm quite surprised at how how little common sense a lot of them have. Right. Uh, maybe you can shed some light on this. Well, I think that I, I don't have any evidence for this, but I, for the most most of my time in China, I've had to self-prescribe. And the basic medical knowledge, especially the Latin or English terminology for things, which is learned in every country country around the world, even like Lao, they knew what I was talking about, right? Is not learned here because of the Af uh, the prevalence of Chinese medicine. And Chinese medicine is kind of more widely used than Western medicine, so the Western medicine always kind of takes a back seat to the Chinese medicine. And number two, there's a lot of cheating and bribery and all kinds of terrible things that go on during the schooling process of doctors, so they'll actually get answers to the tests and all that kind of stuff, so um, there's not a whole lot of actual knowledge and learning that goes into it. And number three, the amount of time you need to go to university to be a pharmacist here. Well, you don't need to go to university to be a pharmacist here, where you need a P almost a PhD, basically, back home to be a pharmacist. And uh, in China, to be a doctor, at least a GP or like one of those little clinic doctors, you can even get away with just a normal bachelor's degree. So the, even the amount of education is a lot lower, right? That's correct, yeah. Uh, it does have a lot to do with the, the education and also the way that the system is kind of tweaked. If you you know, if you go to a medical university, of course they want you to pass. Just like universities, we talked about this before. So yes, there's a little bit of corruption, a little bit of bribery, and a little bit of uh, 
face saving going on which results in maybe less than optimal skill levels. Now I'm not going to say that I haven't met proper skilled doctors because I have but in general I can right now hand on my heart say without a doubt that if you go to visit a doctor in the West you will be dealing with someone who is more professional than dealing with the doctor in China. I'm going to even say this, if you go to Thailand, Laos or even India, you'll be dealing with someone more professional than in China. Yeah, okay, so we kind of got that out of the way. The doctors are capable, but you have to be careful. I've said this before, I'll say it again. When I was training doctors, they had this big university thing happening in Shenzhen, and they used me as a test patient. So these are doctors that are training to deal with foreigners, right? and they've been going undergoing like intensive training they got the best equipment money can buy they set up a really good clinic over there and I went into the clinic saw the doctor told him I was sick with something or other and he prescribed me an antibiotic that I'm allergic to and then when they went to give me an x-ray they didn't know how to use the fancy new x-ray machines properly either so it was kind of embarrassing and also a little dangerous so True. you have to be able to know you know, either go to a private clinic like the one I did in my video, right. or you need to know your stuff. You need to be able to say, wait a second, I'm not going to take that medicine that you prescribed me because I'm allergic to it. Or at least have connections with the doctors, you know. That's how China works. It's all guan xi, right? You also need to know when to turn your indicator off. Oh, that's me this time. Interesting. <laughs> wow, first time for everything, eh? <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, the other day, my friend just had a baby, actually, just like I did. and. Uh, the doctor, you know, was went through all the this process of getting the red envelopes and everything, and they assured everything was going to be fine. And she pulled the baby out of the womb. Yeah. And both shoulders were dislocated, and now the baby's like in this like cast situation. That's and, awful. And that's just a very basic medical procedure that she later admitted she was like, oh, I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, nice. Isn't that ridiculous? So yeah, yeah. it happens. Yeah, that's terrible. Well. Yeah, and we can't we can't be too general to say that no. every single no, no, you know no. hospital and doctor's bad. But yes, there is a lot of this nonsense going on. A lot of bribery in the hospitals. They expect a red envelope, you know, sure. or lucky money to do a good job. And if you, you know, know someone personally, you'll have less of a chance of that happening. Here, left here. Um, but like you know, my friend went to treat something downstairs. If you know what I mean, and uh, he. They prescribed him with a bunch of medicine that he thought would work. He thought it would be a good, you know, a good round of medication, but actually it was just random stuff they were giving him to keep him coming back so he could keep paying for treatment. Well, looks like uh, we've arrived. Shall we do a little bit of a walk and talk? Sounds good. Let's go see that kid. Alrighty. I'm excited. Thanks. First time to meet the mini milk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. All right. So we're about to go and see what this hospital is all about. Yes. Let's take a look. So in China, when you give birth to a baby, 99% of the time you're going to be next to a ton of other patients. These really terrible beds, actually. And the nurses will come in and take care of everyone. So it's kind of difficult to get personal treatment, but if you pay extra money, you can get kind of like a hotel room. Yeah, it's, not, it's like a private room, right? It's still not great. Hi, everyone. Now, since this is uh, China versus the West, you might think that by Western standards, this is pretty, pretty bad, right? It's kind of gross. It smells bad in here. Um, it's kind of clean, but the facility compared to a Western facility is, is not so good. But in China, this is considered to be a really nice place, right? Yeah. So what happened was, uh, she went into the delivery room where there was tons and tons of women giving birth at the same time, screaming, blood everywhere, so that was really scary. But thankfully, right afterwards, they uh, shipped her up here and put the baby in this little bed, and it was here within a couple hours, actually, so it was kind of nice. Every so often, a nurse will come in and clean the baby or clean her or like tell her what to do or pump breast milk or do all that kind of stuff. So there's constant care here, and there's like a little button she can push at all times. Uh, to get a hold of a nurse, and they're actually pretty quick. I was pretty impressed, to be honest. I want to show Dajia one more thing, everyone. That building right there, with that blue sign, yeah. will help you prepare your placenta and cook it for you with Chinese ingredients so that you can consume it afterwards. What are we, Brad Pitt? No, we don't do that. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Just don't get me started on that. 
Um, I think it's, it's really good. You know, actually, uh, those of you who watch my channel, you probably know that I actually train doctors, and so I see a lot of hospitals. I see a lot of the inside of hospitals. And this is actually very nice over here, to be honest. It's pretty well kitted out. Return is great. Yeah, it's actually pretty fantastic. On behalf of Churchill Customs, I would like to seriously congratulate you, Vivi and Seamilk, for having a fantastic and successful little baby girl. Thank you very much. Appreciate so, it. What's her name? Olivia. Okay. And Chinese name? Wei Wan. Wei Wan. What's that supposed to mean? Humble. Oh, humble. It's it's ironic really cool. coming from us. Yeah, very, very, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm pretty sure we'll see this little kid grow up, and uh, in the course of our videos in the future, you'll be able to see how little humble gets along. Yeah. Okay, so um, Vivi's parents and nurses and whatnot have arrived, so we've decided to, to get out of here. So shall we hit the road, Seamus? Get out of here. Ooh. Yeah, cool. That was certainly interesting. Yes, I guess it was. I'm sick of being there though. Been there all week. Oh, well, let's go hit the road. You know the hospital smell? Yeah. It's getting to me. Gotcha. Well, that was really nice, Sea Milk. Yeah. Uh, unlike all the grimness that we have been talking about and some of the stuff I've seen in China, we had a pretty good experience here because we booked a VIP room, we took all the precautions, we, you know, we, we knew who to deal with, what the recommended doctor was and everything. So as long as you know what you're doing in China, you can, you can get good care. Yeah, you didn't have to bribe any doctors or anything, right? No, it's just, you know, you ask around, oh, my, you know, my, uh, my nephew went to this hospital, blah, 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 and she was a good doctor, you know, kind of word of mouth. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to sound overly negative, and a lot of our videos we do come across as being very negative about China, but we're just being very realistic. We can't <clears throat> kind of wear rose-tinted glasses. Come on, girls, that's dangerous. Don't ride your bicycle next to a bloody bus in the middle of the I'll road. wrangle them in. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, let's talk about some of the positives about hospitals in China, and whoa, nice one, bus. I'm gonna say the first positive, um, if as long as you're not getting ripped off, is for basic medical treatment, it is so much cheaper. Yeah, dude, come on, seven RMB to have a doctor's consultation? Right, right. I mean, sure, they feel your pulse and they kind of, you know, it's not the most professional thing, but yes, it's incredibly affordable. I've never had health insurance in China. I've, in fact, I'm just lucky I don't get sick and I'm fairly strong, I guess, I have a strong constitution. But the few times I have had to go to hospital, which is in 10 years, like what, once or twice? Right. And that's only because, you know, my girlfriend at the time forced me to go. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I got that stupid drip thing. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it costs what, like 20, 30 RMB, the, the maximum it's going to cost is like two or 300, you know? Right. So, yeah. I think it's really affordable it's for, for your average Joe anyway. Yep. Uh, if you're going in for like really crazy surgery and stuff, it will be expensive. Oh yeah. I mean, sure if, you, if you break a bone or you, you know, like, yeah, like you say, need an appendix out or something, it's probably going to cost you quite a bit. Right. But, but yeah, it's much, yeah, on the whole, it's just so much cheaper. That's, yeah. that's awesome, actually. Yeah. Compared to the West, you don't actually need to have medical insurance, you know, I'm not saying don't get it, but you don't actually have to. I, I've never had it here. No, no, you get away with it. Have you ever had to use medical insurance here? No, oh, not no. once. Not once. There we I've go. Had, I've had some like issues that I've had to go to the hospital for, but I've never had to use insurance because it was pretty cheap. A couple burns here and there. I broke. Oh, and I broke my knee. That's actually good. A motorcycle accident. I broke my knee. Yeah. I ended up paying. I ended up paying like 450 RMB. To that's get a nothing. fixed broken knee, like eighty dollars. Yeah. Come on, that's cheap. Yeah, absolutely. And they did a pretty good job. Well, you're still mobile, right? Yeah, I'm right. I'm pretty sure there'll be someone in the comments. Oh, just you wait when you're sixty years old. <laughs> when it rains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'll be feeling it in your joints. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. But that's that's definitely a positive. It's cheap. It's also very readily available. There are hospitals everywhere. You know, literally. You know. There are clinics in every little neighborhood, like I said, and there are big hospitals 
like lots of them in every city, not just one, you'll find a whole bunch. Sure. Whereas I find uh, in, in the West, usually only have like one big hospital right. per city, one or two, you know, here yeah, they're everywhere. Sure. Yeah. One thing I'm going to say though, is a little tidbit of warning if you're a foreigner coming here, is try to avoid the little like no-name clinics if you don't know like what they're, you know, any doctors or whatever there. If you're trying to like treat a disease, like, a, like say you're, you, you get an infection. Um, stay away from those little kind of places because they are geared for a private economy so they will kind of like push you to buy more expensive stuff whereas a general hospital like can, can definitely treat an infection try to go for the big ones sure sure that's that's not a bad piece of advice remember that subscriber of mine who got an infection in his eye and went blind yeah and my co-worker at Huizhou University that got in a stomach infection and they cut out two-thirds of his stomach in Guangzhou and he went back to America and he has to stay there in like intensive care and he probably won't live very much longer and the doctor in America told him that he that was completely unnecessary and very treatable yeah okay yeah for sure you know that's another piece of advice I'm going to I'm gonna give right now if you're a foreign if you are living in China and you have a serious condition, like an something, something serious happens, of course, if, it, if it's an emergency, you have to go to a hospital. Sure, here. sure. But if if they are requiring some kind of big surgery, mm. just get yourself to Hong Kong. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, I mean, it's not that difficult to get there. It's Western standard of medicine. It's very expensive, but you know they accept international medical insurance yeah. there. So if you uh, if you live in Guangdong. There's yeah. a lot of cities where they'll have shuttles, emergency medical shuttles that will go to Hong Kong if you're a foreigner, actually. And if you're willing to pay the price, it's probably a good idea. I'd say, for sure. It's definitely, definitely something you should do. So that pretty much wraps it up, eh? Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to our subscribers before we head off? Thank you for welcoming my new child into the world. I'm sure you'll see a lot of her in the future. And thank you also for liking, commenting, and subscribing as well. And if you don't like, comment, or subscribe as like usual. Like that guy. Yeah, he certainly doesn't comment or subscribe. Uh. But he certainly has an interesting home. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as always guys, stay awesome.